Hi guys, another episode of Mavis and Me. Today I'm going to talk about using food rewards during training sessions. So what are the benefits of food rewards? First and foremost, you get a dog who is motivated to learn and loves doing so. Sure, some dogs will work for a simple, oh, good boy, but even those dogs are likely to put more effort into learning if there's a tangible and delicious reward at the end. Another perk is it increases engagement and solidifies the bond between the dog and the handler. Using food as a reward makes the training session a team effort. The dog is problem solving to earn the food rather than doing the task in order to stay out of trouble. The dog is looking forward to working with his handler, which helps increase focus. When our dog is working hard for us, we appreciate his efforts and everybody wins. So I've heard several misconceptions about using food rewards over the years. People say they don't want to carry treats around all the time because they think the dog will ignore them when they don't have the treats. They think that their dog's going to get fat. They think it's going to cost a fortune to be feeding treats all day long when the dog is learning or working. And this one, one of my favorites, oh, my dog gets too crazy when I bring out food. First of all, you don't always have to have treats to get a previously learned behavior from your dog. A dog will repeat a task for lower and lower reward value until it's doing it for praise alone with the occasional reinforcing treat during training opportunities. At this point, a task has become a habit versus a trick. Every time you teach something new, you're going to use up a lot of treats, but that level of reinforcement doesn't last forever. When I first taught Mavis to sit, she got a treat after every successful attempt. I wanted her jazzed about the prospect of sitting, and earning a reward. When I knew she understood the command and could do it anywhere I asked her to perform it, my treat reinforcement reduced. I might ask her to sit, wait a second, then ask her to walk along with me again before actually getting the treat. If she sat from six feet away when I asked, I might give her four treats. It became sort of random, but she knew that a treat was coming at some point, so she continued to sit when asked. The same thing goes for any task that I've trained her. It has become a habit for her to assume that good things come her way as long as she does what I ask, so she happily complies. And I make sure to reward her plenty when the opportunity arises. Working with a highly food motivated dog can be tricky, but try to appreciate the enthusiasm that this dog has for work. Reward for calm, controlled behavior as the first trick, rather than jumping or pawing behavior. When the dog realizes that food is available every time he does something right, and that overly reactive behavior is ignored, he'll start to simmer down and direct his enthusiasm into better performance. Next, let's talk about treats. Treat options can include anything that your dog loves to eat. Hot dogs, cheese, jerky strips, jerky sticks, kibble, biscuits, just about anything. If your dog will work for it, use it. Be cautious with things that might upset your dog's tummy in large amounts. Mavis will work for kibble here at home, but out in public I use treats that have a higher reward value to her, such as jerky strips or jerky sticks, like pepperonis. I chose these because they are easy for me to tear into tiny small pieces while I'm working with her and they aren't sticky or slimy. The idea is to give out a tiny piece each time the dog earns one. Size doesn't really matter to most dogs. If you give them a piece of jerky the size of a pencil eraser, you can get a whole lot of repetitions on one small piece of food. She also eats them very quickly so that we're ready to move on to the next thing without hesitation. She's not chewing and chewing waiting for the food to go down. Oddly enough, Mavis doesn't like cheese or hot dogs, but she'll jump through rings of fire for boiled chicken. I use this at obedience trials when we practice in the parking lot and again when she leaves the ring. This helps her keep her enthusiasm up. Using treats alone is great, but your dog can learn exponentially faster if you use a reward marker, such as a clicker, or the word like yes. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use the clicker as the reward marker, though I actually will use the word yes with Mavis. First off, you need to charge or empower the reward marker. This means you have to help the dog associate the sound of the reward marker with the impending treat that's on its way. Most dogs catch onto this within five to 10 clicks. Once they know that a treat is coming with that sound, they have to understand the concept that their actions are what make you click. This can take some dogs a few sessions to figure out because it's really a concept that's fairly new to them. Basically, it boils down to this. If they can choose the right behavior, they can make you click, which is rewarding. It sort of turns training on its head for the dog. Instead of you telling the dog what to do and then rewarding him for doing it, the dog is trying different things to make you click for the reward to happen. Think of the clicker like a camera. 
you want to click or press the button at exactly the point where the dog is doing the desired behavior. Too early and you're not getting what you're after. Too late and you might actually be getting something completely different. It's a bit of a guessing game, but your skills at capturing the perfect picture will increase with practice. Make sure you do not think of the clicker like a remote control. You shouldn't point it at the dog and click while saying a command. Doing this serves no purpose, at best it's a distraction, or worse yet, it's upsetting to the dog who doesn't understand what you want. A good way to improve your skill with a clicker is to play the clicker game with a friend or a family member. A person holds the clicker, as the handler, and the other person pretends to be the dog. The handler thinks of something they want the dog to do. Maybe it's go sit in a chair, or maybe it's hold up a leg off the ground and hop around in circles. Having this goal in mind, the handler clicks the dog every time it does anything that even resembles the goal. No talking. All you should hear is the clicker and maybe some giggling. The handler should click if the dog looked at the prom in a promising direction or if they lifted their leg to move positions. The handler continues to click behaviors that lead towards the goal. It's pretty fun and it helps us handlers see training from the dog's perspective. And it's not easy, is it? I find it amazing that our loyal companions figure out anything that we want them to do. Another way to improve your clicker timing is to toss a bouncy ball up in the air and try to click every time it either contacts the ground or is eye level with you. This can hone your skill at capturing the perfect moment to click. Now, why do I personally use the word yes instead of a clicker? Mostly because I always have my mouth nearby, whereas I don't always carry a clicker around with me all the time. Also the s sound in yes is attention getting and fairly unique amongst the normal backdrop of life. Another word to consider when using reward markers is the word good. I use good when I like something that Mavis is doing or trying to do, but I'm still trying to get her to finish a goal. It's great for when I'm asking something odd from her, say like backing between a row of seats on the bus. She might get a bit confused about what I want from her, but by letting her know that she's on the right track, she continues to do it. It works well when I ask for a stay too. Good means, hey, I like what you're doing, keep doing it. Now when I tell Mavis, yes, she knows that what she did was right and that I'm no longer expecting her to continue doing it. I use yes as a release word, letting her know that she nailed it. Another word that I use, but some positive trainers don't care for, is nope. I believe only giving positive reinforcement removes a good chunk of the communication between the dog and the handler. Nope doesn't mean bad dog or I'm unhappy, it simply means not that, try something else. I use it sparingly because I don't want Mavis to think she's in trouble and I always try to use it in a happy voice, nope. By using nope, my goal is to help her know that she's barking up the wrong tree and that she should consider a different option. I hope that you see how using food markers and trees is a great way to communicate with your dog, and I highly suggest looking into it if you haven't already. Subscribe if you found my video interesting, and if you have any other comments, hey, leave them below. I'd love to hear about some of the tricks or the tasks that you've trained your service dog to do using reward markers. Talk to you guys later. Bye.